Proszę Państwa, witam na ostatnim, ostatnim panelu. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last panel of this uh, conference before the uh, wrap-up, the roundtable discussion summarizing the conference. This uh, part will be dedicated to the photography of the everyday and the work of Lucia Nimcova, who could not attend for family reasons, but she uh, instead, we have Roman Babiak, the founder of um, Sitcom, Sitcom SK, a Slovak portal, and the Sitcom Award. He's a very effective animator of the uh, photographic community in the region, and we're happy to have him here. And he'll tell us about um, Lucia Nimcova's uh, work, and he'll be talking about the links between photography and the everyday with uh, Eva Klerkot, PhD, who teaches at uh, ethnolog ethnology and cultural anthropology at Warsaw University. Thank you very uh, Good afternoon. Uh, thanks uh, for the invitation for Lucia. Unfortunately, she could not come, so I'm here. And she tasked me to not present her view on her project, but uh, to present my own views on her project. Uh, basically, she started to work with the archives in 2005 when she was preparing the project uh, Rusins, which dealt with the minorities of, of uh, Ruthenians or Lemkos in Polish who uh, were uh, relocated in Eastern Slovakia, which she is part of, of that community. And while she was working uh, with that archive, she came across the archives of uh, cult uh, Regional Cultural Institute, uh, Regional Cultural Center in Humana. Uh, but this was the first time when she came across visit professionally. But she was working for that uh, cultural center after finishing her secondary school. So she knew the archive of that institution, and she knew the person of uh, Juraj Kamer who was the only photographer who was uh, commissioned by the Regional Cultural Center to document the official life in the district of Humene. Because during the communism, every district had a so-called regional center, which was called in Slovak language Osvetove Stredisko, which was responsible for documenting the official life in the city for mostly propagandistic purposes. So she since 18, she knew about that archive, and she was always interested to work with it. And in uh, 2006 and 2007, she requested Jure Kamer to give her the permission to use the archive. Uh, he gave her the full permission to research the archive, and he gave us the archive physically to us, so we could scan everything, because actually the archive was not structured in any sense. It was the it was a green container which we use for, for fruits or vegetables in Slovakia, which had a lot of uh, negative either rolls or uh, strips of, of the negatives. So basically what, what Lucia did with the project, uh, with the archive of Jure Kamer is that she researched the whole archive and selected images which she found important in respect to, uh, to her project. Uh, basically what she was interested in was uh, uh, that Juraj Kamer was documenting official events. But usually, uh, while documenting official events, at the end of the roll, or let's say last four or five images, or at the beginning of the roll, or in the middle, just between the events, there would be some images which were so-called unofficial. They were not used for propagandistic purposes, because either they were not good enough, or he did not consider them relevant. So she was mostly interested in these uh, images. And also, even in the case uh, Juraj Kamer decided to, to publish something for propagandistic purposes. Well, uh, he was the first selector, and then there was some kind of somebody sitting in the office who said, OK, we want to use these photographs for, for this and this purpose. They usually cut the photographs in order to have only the information which they needed. But Lucia was more interested in the whole picture of those archives. And this was the first image uh, which, which she was interested in. Basically, this is, the, this is what Juraj Kamer was doing. He was going, in one day, he was going maybe to, to, to visit four or five events 
through in different villages or towns of our district, and he was documenting what was happening. Uh, I think it is quite important to say that uh, when Lucia was researching his archive, she was very much interested in, let's say, gestures or typology of the, of the people who were documented. Besides documenting the official events, uh, Jure Kammer was also responsible for documenting the so-called uh, working collectives. It was called, in Slovak language, Brigada Socialistickej Práce, so let's say in English, uh, Brigades of Socialist Work, uh, because during the, the socialism we had this, uh, well, the, the communists have invented this propaganda that, that each brigade of socialist work would reach more and more in the production of certain products and then they would receive either bronze or, or silver or gold medal of, of Brigade of Socialist Work. And he was responsible for documenting all these collectives in our district. So basically, uh, he would be either going to agricultural uh, site or he would go into the factory and, uh, and document the people. But what he somehow invented was that usually uh, other photographers were inviting these uh, working collectives to the studio but he said, for me, it's better if we do it outside and uh, in, in, let's say, the natural environment where they operate. But this natural environment often brought some kind of strange thing to the image. And then people also reacted differently than they, if they would be photographed in the studio. So Lucia was interested in those small details. And when she was doing research, she made these marks. I mean, you can see it now that Many of the images are marked with uh, either yellow or, or red uh, fix, uh, just to maybe point out to the audience of her exhibition or the book, uh, which element of the photograph is for her important. Because then later on we come to the second part of that project, which, which uh, when in 2007 she somehow restaged or revisited the places and she, she documented the same places or same people again in color. So, uh, but I will come to, to that. So this is how the, her studio looked when, when she started to do the research of, of archive of Uri Kamer. Basically, I think we have scanned around six or 700 images, which was selection of the 10 years of his work. He started to work in uh, 1980. And uh, the, the last year when, when Lucia considered valid for her project was 88 or 89, just shortly before the revolution. He still continues to work in that institution, even now, although he's now more focused on video. So he's doing video documentation of all these kind of events. Maybe if we, if we have energy and time and money, we do the research in his video archive, which I'm sure will be very interesting. What is important about Jure Kammer also is that he, he did not, he was not against the regime and he was not the pro-regime. He had this ambiguous uh, relationship to the regime, so he didn't care. He didn't care if they are red or, or, or red or blue or, or black. And that brought to his photographic style uh, some kind of neutrality, which was for Lucia very important, that, that he was not criticizing or, or, or commenting on the regime. He was just documenting it. Because you, originally he was some kind of a hippie rocker who was really not in, interested in photography so much. I mean, he, he was more interested in playing with his band. But I mean, this was his job, and he, he was the only one in our district who had the school for, for, uh, for photography, so he had to be commissioned, even though he was, I think, for communists, he, he might have been a little bit mm, too hippie to be hired. But anyway, he was the only one to be hired. So uh, now uh, we come to the first product, uh, which, uh, where Lucia used his photos. And this is the video kiss. Uh, in this video, uh, Lucia tried to show the, 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 the life or, or the environment in which women opera operated during the communism on the backdrop of of song by famous singer Prince.
so we come back to the uh, we come back to the project unofficial which uh, was published as a, as a book uh, which had uh, two parts the black and white and the color book so so black and white included pictures of uri kamer and the color part included uh, restaged or revisited images of uh, lucia basically uh, what she tried to say by this project is that that nothing has changed that the revolution did not bring, let's say, the changes which people have expected. And uh, she mostly focused on the, on the way the cultural institutions are run, or what kind of people work in the cultural institutions in the periphery of the, of the, of the Slovakia, which is our town called Humene. But by, by doing this in such a small, ta uh, small town, as we have discussed with Eva, and we will be discussing later on, she somehow tried to uh, create a small world which could, could be juxtaposed to the bigger element of the society and all the societies in, in Central and Eastern Europe. So even though Juraj Kamer was not criticizing the regime, I think the selection of Lucia is criticizing the, the regime and let's say the way uh, or the situation that the regime is still within us, mostly within the generation of people who created the regime in 70s and 80s because they are now the most powerful people in our societies. So, and this is the selection of images by Juraj Kamer. I think, I believe that in 80s, uh, the situation in, in our societies became obvious, that, that people became very passive and there were, they had two lives. They had the official life of, of their workplace and then they have that private life. Once you got home from, from your work, your life became something different. So I think there was this schizophrenia of, of, of official and unofficial life. And in, 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 uh, in, then in the projects which followed uh, leftovers and double coding, uh, Lucia tried to bring together, it's like a trilogy of working with archives. She tried to bring the official, unofficial, then the private archive and the hidden, so-called hidden archive of Slovak Trezor movies. And I mean, when she, when, when Lucia had a discussion with Jure Kamer, or I had a discussion with him, we got one drunk, one very drunk in Amsterdam, when he was invited one for one show in Netherlands and he didn't know anybody because he's not from the art world. He's, he's just a normal guy from the, from the small city. So he didn't know anybody and, and he, when, when we discussed with him, so, but how could you photograph these people like this? I mean, you are criticizing them, no? I mean, it's obvious that, that you are not making fun of these people, but you are making a statement. He said, no, I mean, I just came and it was like this. I didn't do anything, I just photographed it. But of course, I mean, I think even though he was not pro or anti, I mean, every, since he was a hippie, I'm sure he was more anti. So I'm sure that certain element of that personality comes into those photographs. Now we come to another point of, of, the, pro, of the Lucia's projects, which is that she herself was documented. So the girl with the red cross is Lucia singing for communists. Uh, and uh, I think she enjoyed it a lot because she didn't have to go to school. So they were singing for communists and uh, the leader of the, of the Chor, later she discovered that her na his name was found in the a, in a name of uh, agents of secret police. So, and then these are the images which, I mean, show that while Juraj Kamer was documenting the official events, there was always something unofficial happening. And I'm sure he liked girls also. <laughs> and the heroes. I think 
the, the generation of so-called heroes and of these working uh, collectives is basically the lost generation because nowadays they are, most of them are 50s or 60s or maybe 70s. Nothing has changed for them. The situation is even worse. And I think they, they, have, lo they have lost some kind of belief which for them was very important. Basically, they are, they are building this system. They were building the system and suddenly they saw that the system has disappeared and I think they, it's very hard for them to find the position or place within the current society which is so much focused on youth, on, on, the, on the strength, on, on the beauty and on all those myths which came with the Western culture. And I think there is a question to what extent our societies have, let's say, developed or, uh, 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 if, uh, let's say, evolved into, if, if, the, if the life during the communism, let's say, was better or worse, I think that is a question which many of, of scholars and many people are asking, what, what has changed, what, what did not change, what, has, what, what we have achieved, actually, or what, what are we achieving? But for many of them, definitely, the life during the communism was much more better. I'm sure the situation is the, it's the same in Poland for, for the people, for those people. I, I mean, Juraj Kamer studied photography, but I guess he did not like school so much, so most of his photographs are, let's say, bad. But also the selection of Lucia was that he was, she, she was looking mostly for the images which had some kind of, let's say, photographical mistake. That she, she did not uh, select those images which were, let's say, perfect, or the co composition was nice. And then what she did later on with her, with her images was that she tried to learn the mistakes of Juraj Kamer or other amateur photographers and bring it to her own style when, when creating her own series. So this is called Dance Against Atomic War. As you can imagine, we had a lot of propagandistic events which, which should teach us how to, how to behave, for example, in case of atomic attack from the Western powers. Now, uh, we come to the first uh, situation where Lucia used these archival images to restage the situation in 2009. So she tried to look for the same kind of typology of people and uh, she created the video which looks like this. So basically she showed these people the image which she would like to restage and she, she asked them to just sit for a while. Sit and stand. This one is called photo session. So we come back to the presentation. And now uh, we come to, to the images which uh, Lucia created in, over 2007 and 2008, which is part of color, color book unofficial. So after, after, the, after researching archive of Juraj Kamer and uh, researching archives of other amateur photographers from Humene, she, she created this, this essay. For her, uh, and in this color essay, the, the, num the names of the photographs are very important. So this one is called Popular Lamp. And the, 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 uh, for, for Lucia, some kind of element of repetition, an element of randomness was quite important be because she found it in, in archive of Uri Kamer and so she repeated it also here. So as you can see, the Popular Lamp is also here. And it's also here. This is called discussion about democracy. It was a discussion with the, with the members of the House for Old People. It's, let's say, before, before the local elections, where the local mayor sitting in the middle 
was uh, basically discussing with uh, with older guys what kind of development uh, city is bringing to the, to the, its people, and also my father was present, the last guy on the on the right. This is called competition. And this is called International Women's Day. This is the opening of the sports hall. This is the winner. This is the librarian. And this is a delegate. This is a curator in the Regional Cultural Center. This is the presentation of the cultural institutions. These are the workers in the, in the Museum of uh, Ruthenian Culture in Svidnik. This is the director. The, the name of the image is director, but it's a director of the Museum of Ruthenian Culture in Svidnik. This is the former director. And this is the principal. These are the shadows. And these are the neighbors. Well, uh, by this image, she, she wanted to portray the, the, the meeting of the two, two worlds, the old one and, and the new one. I think the architecture, well, I think even in Poland or in Central and Eastern Europe, the architecture of, of early 90s is, uh, is still with us, and I think we are, we are quite happy for it. And these are the milkmaids. Uh, this is the this is a very important image for Lucia because what she wanted to say by this is that despite this generation is somehow lost, there is a strong feeling of, uh, let's say, community or some kind of life which was based not on individualism. This is an installation view. And, uh, and now we come to the... To the to another result of the research in, in the archives, which is a video exercise. This is a video installation. On the backdrop, it's, it's very dark, but on the backdrop, uh, it's uh, 400 images of URI camera with the video exercise, which I will uh, screen you now. Video exercise uh, was conceived by Lucia based on, on the, after she did the color images, she, she felt that, uh, that the people, that the old people are very passive, that they are somehow dead, alive. So she wanted to bring them alive again. So she asked them to exercise. She did not tell them what to do, but she asked them to exercise. <laughs> Skúste podvihnúť, že či uh, bude mať zabere ruky, keď podvihnete hore. Skúste podvihnúť hore, že či vidím ruky. Dobre, dobre, dobre. Uh -huh. Dobre, tak. By, by asking people to exercise, uh, Lucia wanted to point out to the function of memory, to the, to, to the fact that the, the propaganda which, which uh, used uh, the morning exercises in the radio w is so heavily embodied in their, <laughs> in their memories that they, cl that, I mean, when you ask them to exercise, they do this. So they don't, like, because in our societies we don't have this strong uh, uh, myth, myth of, 
of body, like like. Because if you ask to exercise people in, in Western Europe or in America, they would exercise the modern aerobic or whatever. But these people exercise what, what they were exercising 60 years ago. I think, I mean, the video is funny, but I think even even people on the video, I think they, they entertain themselves quite a lot while exercising. It's not that we are making fun of them. It's really... Basically, it goes like this, three more minutes. Uh, you can see it on, on the website of Lucia. Uh, now we will move forward to another project. <laughs> So this was this was the project unofficial. It also has some more videos which you can see on, on the website of Lucia. Uh, now we come to the second part of the trilogy, which is leftovers, which are private archives of uh, Marian Kusik. Again, it was published uh, as a as a book, uh, which looks like this, in a, in the same thing where we would get our morning breakfast when we go to school. Uh, the archive of Marian Kusik uh, is a private archive. He, he came to Humene uh, from the small village uh, called Sobrance, uh, close to the Ukrainian border. They have a good wine there. And when he came to Humene, uh, he started to work for Hemko Straske as a, as a photographer and a guy who was responsible for pre preparing posters and different propagandistic uh, elements. Not, not propagandistic, but more like promotion of the, of the company. And uh, because he was new to the, to the town, he, he wanted to make friends because his, both of his parents died and he was, he was basically alone. And because he wanted to make friends, he said to his friends that every time they will have a family celebration, he will go to their homes and he will photograph it. And he will, uh, because he was working at this department in the factory, so he had access to a lot of uh, films, to the rolls. He had a lot of to, uh, access to the chemicals and to the big papers. So he told them that, uh, let me into your houses, and then I will give you back photos. And the photos were like two by two enlargements, handmade. He was making enlargements in his, uh, in his uh, cellar. So he put the paper on the wall, and he had the uh, Zvechovak, I don't know how to call it in English, the, the thing which uh, lights to the enlarger. And then he would uh, buy the biggest uh, plastic uh, containers to wash the photos. So, so, and that was the way how he would be part of the community. And so he created this, this series of leftovers. But he never wanted to show this series. I mean, it was Lucia who, who, who saw his archive. Because originally he wanted to work with his archive of nudes photography. But he destroyed it when he got married. He, she said that she saw some of them and they were really something. 
but now we are with the project leftovers. So this is uh, his his uh, archive of, and but most of them they are small kids. Basically, the generation of us, of Lucia and me. M many of them are our friends, or we know them from town. And these are the photos he created. Uh, for for example, for Marian Kusik, it was important that he used this uh, system which many photographers do, uh, portrait photographers do, that he came to the place and he did something like a warm-up photos, and then he did the last or, or two or three which for him were important. But Lucia used those warm-up photos, so they are also like leftovers. That's, that's what is the name of the, of the series is called Leftovers, because they are not the photos which Marian Kusik would select and use to give to the friends, of course. But, and, and this, this series, I think what Lucia uh, and, and Michal Moravcik, who helped her with this book, tried with this project Leftovers, was that what she wanted is that if we have, if, if she, or if, if anybody from our generation would have uh, babies and they would ask us, so what was it like when you were young, that, that this is something what we would show to, to, our, to our kids, that this is how it was when we were young. Uh, together with Michal Moravcik, uh, they also created uh, short stories uh, which were reminders of the certain situations which happened to children during the communism, or during that time, it was not necessarily related to communism. And also the book includes uh, short quotes or, or elements of the life of uh, Marian Kusik. In this case, the, 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 the personality of, of photographer Marian Kusik is quite important in, in, in this book. And uh, when, when the book was ready, for the exhibition purposes, uh, Lucia and Michal Moravcik are presenting uh, series leftovers as an installation. So we usually try to go to visit uh, local people in the place where the exhibition is taking over and try to borrow the, the old furniture from them. Or if not available, then buy it in the, in the second-hand shops and make an installation of the leftovers photographs on the, on the old furniture. These are the installation view of the of the archive of of Marian Kusik. I think for uh, for Lucia was was important the the debate around what is what is a good image how the, the good image should look like, how does a good image reflect, let's say, how, how is it maybe authentic, how is it true, or coming back to the discussion which we had here. And, uh, but these are the questions. I think there is, there is, no, re there is no real answer. I mean, there are, there are certain artists who are using the archive for their subjective purposes, and there are, I think, artists or historians who are maybe trying to find the objective truth. I think there are different approaches to, to, to the debate, and I think both of them are, are legitimate. I think in both of these projects, Lucia, let's say, some of the people would say misused the archives of those two people to create her own view of, of, of the world we live in or we lived in. But I mean, this is up to, I think we can discuss this. So that's all. And the third, uh, the third element of the, of the trilogy is the, uh, the project Double Coding. It's a video installation where Lucia used the archive of Trezor Slovak movies. But, uh, I mean, I I will, we will not show it here because we wanted to discuss only these two projects dealing with the photographic archives. So I think that was from, from the presentation and I think now Eva will present her view on, on those two projects. Uh, yes, and um, yeah, actually, uh, I will present some uh, ideas of mine, but then uh, uh, I would like us to discuss, because it was the original idea, Lucia cannot be with us, but I hope we will uh, have an exchange on, uh, on the topic. Um, since the beginning, when, uh, when I got to know this, these two projects, uh, I was tempted, yeah, if you can, oh, yeah. uh, I was tempted to cross-title them, actually. 
so the project that uh, uh, these are the protagonists, uh, two photographers and Lucia. <laughs> Um, I was tempted to cross-title them, actually, because uh, to me, uh, unofficial was much more what uh, Marian Kusik was doing. And leftovers uh, are the projects uh, related to Uri Kammer photographs uh, because of this strong interpretative and critical approach that Lucia has taken. Uh, namely, uh, she uh, took leftovers from what she thought to be communist times uh, in these pictures and transformed them somehow. Uh, so, um, yeah, this is uh, the first question I will have. I mean, what would you and Lucia think about, about uh, this cross-titling uh, the project, especially because as far as I know, uh, which is uh, my unofficial knowledge of the uh, fate of the of the camera archive is that the archive that is still stored in this cultural regional center is stored next to the toilet so it it's been like uh, completely neglected and relegated as some leftovers actually so um, uh, my uh, my question uh, the first question would be uh, uh, related to this problem of cross titling and unofficiality and leftovers. But actually, I understand that this uh, official, unofficial, as you already um, explained, is related to two sphere, the private sphere and the public sphere um, in life after the communism. Um, and why is it archives of every day? Um, actually, they are not of every day in terms of photographing people uh, at everyday chores, uh, but it's archives rather of every man. I mean, the protagonist uh, is uh, the everyman, means uh, the protagonist of the everyday, uh, which is a person living according to the common sense, living uh, according to the very fluid and uh, best knowledge for the, for the moment. Uh, uh, you were explaining that Kammer was a person not for and not against the system. And I think basically if we in social sciences speak about every man, we mean this common sense level of, of uh, dealing with reality and uh, finding always the, you know, the best way and very situated knowledge, very actively created knowledge in the spot. It's not something that is given to us. So um, that's why I would call the archives uh, the archives of every day or every, uh, every man rather than, uh, than every day. And um, uh, what, uh, what actually is interesting is that the, the photographer Kusik himself in the motto to the book says, uh, I remember plenty of stories from the last century that were not about dissidents or tragic events, just ordinary stories. So um, the idea of, uh, of the everyday archive and every man is expressed by, by the author, uh, one of the authors uh, himself and was used by, uh, by Lucia as a motto um, to the book. Uh, but uh, then, if we look at the two projects, actually we see a uh, very huge difference in her approach to two works, to two photographers and two works. One of the parts, I will say, is very critical and very actively engaging in, in, uh, in a dialogue, but actually uh, staged by herself. She makes the statement and then makes the archive to follow her own statement. In the second one, I would call the project more intimate. It's also Lucia that is uh, the director, uh, but she allows uh, Kusik to speak and we get to know his own story. I mean, in the book, uh, his personal story is explained both with words and with pictures, and we get to know the person, while Kammer is not given any, any word, actually. So uh, I will say the approach to two personalities uh, is, is different. So uh, since the beginning, we have Lucia as a found, uh, someone that finds archives. This is important thing. She does not create archive. I mean, she creates an archive as a comment to one of the on her foundings. But she finds the archives, and then she 
she decides that she wants to do something uh, with the archives. Uh, why? And this is again a quotation from her book, because these photographs gives, uh, give the access to time when she didn't yet look through the camera, but the time she remembers. So that's why I've put this uh, picture of hers that was done by Kusik on one hand, but on the other shows her exactly at the age, more or less, when the photographs could, be, uh, could have been taken. So it's actually the little girl in her <laughs> that is uh, fascinated by the archives, by her foundings, and that is uh, trying as an adult person to uh, make some statement about uh, the reality that is surrounding her uh, at the moment of the statement. So it's since the beginning is, uh, is of course, an interpretative work. Uh, and uh, in the case of the first of the project, it's very, um, very critical. Um, and if you find an archive, uh, I think the what you do, I mean, whether you are an anthropologist or a historian or uh, an artist, uh, you make a selection. I mean, it's very rarely that we have so small archive that we can deal uh, with every single picture. We get attracted to some pictures for some reasons, and we get m less attracted to the others. So what was the clue to, to the selection of Lucia? And my uh, impression was actually that she was really attracted by form, form of people's... Uh, movements, the gestures, as you said. So it was actually very formal selection. I, I would try to avoid formalistic because it's not this, this meaning. It's, it's formal. And it got me thinking, um, what kind of form is so attractive to her? Why, actually, she got attracted to the forms of human uh, bodies and human gestures. Um, and I think it's because she found the form like hollow form, like hollow people, empty forms in this first project. I'm all, all the time referring to the project based on cameras uh, photographs. Um, and uh, the hollow form uh, is something that is quite characteristic for, uh, for reality of uh, real socialism for the Soviet system. There is a very interesting and very good text by Alexei Yurchak. Uh, the text is called Everything Was Forever Until It Was No More on the Soviet Hegemony of Form. And it's a very powerful interpretation um, of uh, what were the conditions that made the collapse of the Soviet system possible while keeping this possibility completely invisible. Because actually, the collapse of the Soviet system was something that uh, nobody expected. I mean, at least at the moment, it was collapsing. We, we were saying that. Now, you, after some years, you've got uh, clever people saying they really had expected it. But at the moment it was collapsing, nobody was expecting it was going to collapse. So actually, the point Jurczak is making is um, that it was the form that kept all the corrupt mechanism, the mechanism that was really dissolving uh, in this stream of situated, common-sensitive knowledge underneath the form. Uh, it was the form that uh, prevented people from seeing that the system was collapsing. So the form actually was empty, but at the same time, this empty shell protected the developments underneath from, I'm sorry, from being seen. So uh, my idea is that actually this empty form is something that uh, Lucia finds attractive. And this is the, the clue, the, the key to, to the selection of uh, these bodily movements that she made contemporary people to follow because of uh, what she had found in, in the old um, photographs. And uh, this is exactly uh, the statement that nothing has changed. 
um, this form was so powerful that um, actually I will quote now uh, your Chuck. Ideological forms were not just copied, but perfectly replicated, which made them frozen and context independent. This replication was accompanied by a transformation of the meanings for which ideological forms stood in different contexts. And this process took place not only at the level of ideological texts, but also other discourses of ideology, the visual, ritualistic, and also in centralized formal structures of everyday practice. So these frozen shells of forms was uh, the thing that Lucia saw in Kammer's pictures and got attracted by it, by them, and then used them, these shells, as forms in her project that was to make a comment that nothing has changed. And I find it really very challenging and very interesting as an artistic uh, uh, strategy. Um, and uh, it gets me thinking that it might be also an explanation why nothing has changed. Because still, this form is what is visible, but underneath, maybe something is going on. And it will be another, quest uh, another question to you. Uh, isn't it really n anything going underneath? Because I, I, I would guess there is life under this shell uh, that is uh, supposed to be empty. Um, and um, this is... Uh, about her critical project. The second part of her critical project is making comments, making an archive that is a comment to the first archive that has been found. And uh, in my understanding, uh, she uses, uh, Lucia uses uh, photography as kind of technology uh, for detecting the similarities of forms, but also for creating them. It's not, only, it's not only finding, it's also uh, creating and again the question is then what is beneath this form? Because uh, again, I don't believe this form is empty. <laughs> uh, my experience is that uh, of course um, in local contexts uh, with the transformation, very often we have feeling that nothing has changed, but actually there are changes that are going under underneath. At least this is this is the experience I have from Poland. But again, uh, the question is whether you know Humene and you know uh, <laughs> the place you did your research and your project much better. So uh, I, I would like you to comment on that. Um, and I think this approach that uh, Lu Lucia has um, taken towards the material she found, um, uh, I would never ever dare to call it illegitimate. I would say uh, this is really a very legitimate approach on an air. She feels that she inherited these pictures and she is uh, authorized to do with them things because she's from there, because she is this little girl over there. So it's like it's her own heritage and it's her own identity. So what she is doing, she is uh, constructing actually in this project her own identity uh, using the images that come from her own uh, world when uh, again to quote her uh, didn't when she didn't has the uh, have the access to uh, uh, to the camera she didn't look yet through the camera uh, so uh, I think uh, this approach is a very typical approach of, of an heir, but of course not of an, uh, a scientist, but this is what she's aware, uh, perfectly aware. Um, and another question I will have is the relationship of the photograph with their uh, archival aliases, whether you, whether you asked these people involved in the, in the project, because that's true that if you watch the, the, the videos, they are enjoying themselves. Uh, you don't feel that there is strong power relationship going on. But there is some power relationship. And, and my question is whether you investigated also uh, into this power relationship. Mm, while um, about the uh, intimate project uh, means the one uh, with Marian Kusik, and you can see some big uh, photograms that he had at home that you have mentioned. <laughs> um, uh, they are... Um, uh, these pictures actually, uh, 
they photograph the practices of, of every day. Um, and they are intimate also because, as you, as you have already said, you both, Lucia, and you belong to the same generation of so-called Husak children. And I will quote from, the, from Lucia's uh, project book uh, a quotation. It's not her own text, but it's a quotation by um, a sociologist. Um, Husak children. It was a baby boom generation. Thanks to robust family planning incentives, around a million children were born between 1970 and 979. Uh, 939,489 uh, to be precise. The marriage rate in Czechoslovakia has reached record levels. This is a quotation. I used to stay at international conferences. Every person of marriage material gets, marriage, gets married. In those days, 95% of people got married. That doesn't make much sense, considering that every population has at least 3% homosexuals, 3% of people with mental disorders, and 3% of people with, several disabil uh, with severe disabilities. To put it simply, there are at least 10% of the population who are not marriage material, and still 95% uh, of the population was getting married says the Czech sociologist Ivo Mojny. Uh, so um, you belonged to, I mean, Lucia belonged and, uh, uh, to this uh, generation of, uh, of Husak children, uh, children and made the comment on this reality as well. And in the second book, this much more intimate than the, than the first one, actually this is, um, this is exactly wh what I find is, uh, the comment uh, that reve uh, reveals this private side of living under the communism and this absurdity of propaganda and the way people coped, uh, the way that uh, people getting to know uh, every shop assistant in every, every type of shops in order to get uh, uh, things uh, at home and uh, people uh, tried to sew up their jackets from upholstery materials and so on and so on. And this is documented and this is, this is uh, shown in, uh, in this book. And the, the whole image we have um, is quite clumsy uh, because these are the leftovers in sense uh, they were the, the uh, images that were not supposed to be shown to the protagonists, but it's, um, it's really very cozy at the same time and, and quite warm and intimate. So we get like two projects uh, showing the two sides very clearly of life under, uh, under the communism, this hollow form and, this, and something that was going um, in, uh, in, private, uh, in private sphere. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is something that has been written and stated several times, and it's actually it's kind of a trite if we, if we talk about life under the totalitarian systems, that uh, what is meaningful is the private sphere, and what is hollow is the, is the public sphere. Um, but what follows from this is that every man gets Meaning. I mean, meaningful is the everyman, not the hero, not, not the important pr protagonist. This is kind of revenge of the individual on the totalitarian machine. Um, and um, uh, I would uh, like to uh, end up with some other questions. The main question would be, again, what are the ordinary stories of today, because we got the comment by Lucia to the official stories, to the, uh, to the public sphere, but we didn't, didn't, have the, uh, didn't get the comment about this Kusik side. Um, so uh, we know that Kusik has quitted making pictures. So why Lucia didn't feel com like, like compelled to uh, answer his pictures with her own pictures? Uh, what are the ordinary stories about today? And it might be uh, the answer to the question I posed about the shell. Maybe these stories are under the shell and they are somehow not visible, but this is, this is, this is a question. And do you think that your people, people that you worked with, uh, share the vision that is transmitted by, by the projects? I, 
try to make some some points. I will I will use the the text uh, which uh, which Lucia wrote together with Fedor Blaschak for the book unofficial. Which, which so I mean concerning the the statements of the of the of, of this shell and of this uh, Yurchak, I think well, there is a there is a quotation here that what what turns out to be significant are those moments when personal experience seemingly accidentally penetrates the official scheme, we may come to realize that the official reality was comprised of thousands of personal stories that there was nothing like the official reality. And uh, then for her own, I think for on, on her own statement on why, why she selected those images or why she did not select others, I think for her, what was important, what is also written here, that she was not conducting historical research. That, that was the most important. And then, that I think what for her, I think what, what was important for her was that uh, she, I think what she tried to do personally, on personal level, was to try to deal with her own history. Because I think, and it comes now to, the, to the what is happening now and underneath. Uh, we are back to Humana now. Uh, that's why I come from now. <laughs> so I think it's it's very difficult, even for for normal people and not for the artists, <laughs> to to survive in in such an environment where, uh, let's say, the activity or, or let's say proactivity or 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 critical critical statement or critical opinions are not welcomed on the official level. On the unofficial level, uh, on the private level. Those critical statements or or proactivity is taken even worse. Is taken as an attack on the personality. Maybe it's a maybe it's a Slovak phenomenon, but I think it's some kind of post. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I would like to skip talking about post communism and, and now because it doesn't maybe really matter now. I think what what matters is that the people somehow got disconnected to something, which. Which is missing. I think it's missing in in, uh, in everyday life of our societies, and especially in such a small towns on periphery where, for example, many people left for either capital or England or whatever else. What has left? What has what what has what what has left? Even on the human side, is leftovers. I would say it. I'm very critical now, mm -hmm. but it's this is I think difficult. But of course, under these leftovers or within those leftovers, there are still something what is happening underneath. But I think even during the communism, things were much more easier for things which were happening underneath than it's now. I think maybe it's more difficult to be, let's say, underground now than it was before. Maybe there is no underground now. But I mean, everybody is just in the center or something. There is, I don't think there is so much space to navigate. I think the, yeah. And but, do you, thi uh, but do you think uh, people share your, uh, your view? That of course, in our, in our town they don't share this, of course. <laughs> Why of course? Uh, I think because they are dealing with the everyday, everyday life and somehow they, they forget, they, they don't consider important to think about it because they, they consider it that this will not bring change to their lives. This will not help anything, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you confront the protagonists with the yeah, archival when, yeah, when Lucia was doing the, the, the color images of unofficial and, and the project uh, and the video exercise, uh, majority of the color images are, are not staged. They, they are documents of the situation which happened. So basically, there was, there was no need to confront. Some of them are staged photographs which were created based on the research uh, in the archives. So basically that's kind of transformation of the, of, the, of the multiple images from the archives into one image. And in that case, I think, well, they, they enjoyed even the photo shoot. I mean, for example, uh, the, the image competition when they are drinking the, 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 the red uh, Malinovka. Uh, I think they enjoyed it a lot. I think these people are bored because they are, they are Again, they were left over by the system. The, nobody is really care. Nobody does care of them, and there is actually no space for them to be active within our contemporary societies. I mean, I, I can imagine that in a big cities, the, the, the old people, the old folks, 
can somehow, I mean, can live an active life. But uh, in the peripheries, I think they are bound to end up as some kind of losers in houses for, for old folks. Or they move to the, to the village to live in, in the house. So their love is, is a one big boredom filled with, so everything what you make for them, I think this, which is, I think, uh, I mean, even Katarzyna Sheda in, in her many of her projects, which she, di which she did with local community. I think these people are happy for any kind of, any kind of activity which will uh, bring them out of the ordinary. Because I think during the communism they had actually much more chances to be out of ordinary. Maybe because of that, that, that there was much more time for the private life during the communism. Because your eight, eight hours shift ended, it was just eight, four, nothing more. Nothing more, there was nothing like working for 20 hours because you are manager of the Coca-Cola or something. There was, I don't think there was something like that. So I think there was more time for, for these things. Thank you so much. And I think maybe it is time that we should open up the discussion for, for everybody. And I, I will allow myself to ask the first question, if I may. Uh, uh, for the first is a, yeah, m you said um, about the lost generation, yes? That this generation that, that is being portrayed there is a kind of lost generation. And then you said that um, those people lost their belief in something. And then you said that they, that they disconnected from something. Uh, and you, you didn't say specifically what. So I, I wanted to say uh, and maybe ask something about that. Because one of the things about the new system you said, uh, 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 you talked about youth, beauty, strength, and all this kind of positive myths. Uh, you didn't say one thing that is um, capitalism, in a way. I think that, uh, um, that in the post-socialism uh, post -socialist condition, we have, in a, in a way, uncritically embraced uh, capitalism and confounded it with democracy and this is maybe what is the, the problem with connecting to the to the past that we have discarded um, um, uncritically what was before and uh, I think that in, in, in many ways Lucia's projects bo both of them connect to a uh, to a film that Phil Collins made for not the singer the the, the, the contemporary artist um, he made for the for the last Berlin Biennale it was it was a film about about four um, uh, people for teachers, I mean, people who were teaching uh, uh, Marxist thought in, um, uh, during the GDR times, and they were uh, recounting their experiences, and all of them, uh, some of them were successful in the, in the capitalist times and made a lot of money, some of them not, um, there were some personal uh, tragedies involved, and etc., etc., but all of them uh, felt a certain disconnection and a certain loss, uh, as, as you said, Roman, exactly. And, and they said that what they lost was uh, a certain kind of utopia, maybe, or community they felt at that time. And that uh, in spite of the fact that the system was repressive and everything we know about it, that there was this kind of um, horizon that we can arrive at something together, you know. Um, um, and um, one more thing that kind of struck me, maybe, was about this empty shell you said. I had, the, I had a strong impression, I don't know how you feel about that, um, is that uh, in those projects you can see two temporalities and two systems, or I don't know, two realities maybe, two temporal realities inhabiting each other. That for example in those pictures from the 80s, I mean you see a lot of, a, a lot of the West because the young culture, you know, the rock and roll and hippies and, and you know, the punk-like and you know, all those kinds of of youth culture you would see, it's all uh, assimilated and transformed from the West. And this kind of, you know, making, m being fashionable and making clothes out of, um, uh, out of materials that were not uh, dis d destined for clothes and, um, yeah, suing yourself, substitute jeans and stuff like that. So this is the, this is the way that the, this other side inhabited the, the, the East. And then you have all those body, um, 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 this, th those gymnastics in, in the exercises that, that you see that the old system and, um, well, that this old world inhabits our bodies still. I don't, I don't know if I can subscribe to that because I'm, I'm a little bit too young for that, but the generation a little bit older than, than me, you still see, it is really inscribed in the bodies and I found it very beautiful, this, this film. It's inscribed in the bodies, definitely, but uh, I'm not sure it's, it's, it's inscribed in minds and f what comes out from the project is, is exactly that it's inscribed yeah. in minds as well. So my question was what was going in minds, actually. 
yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the question if it is in their mind or only in the body, I, well, I know 90% uh, of, of protagonists of the video exercise, so I mean, I can clearly say that they are, I, I mean, personally, they are quite free people. This is just that how memory works. I mean, it's not maybe mind, it's just the function of me how the memory functions. That uh, I don't know if, if your body can, because I'm sure they were not exercising at least for 30 years, so exercise. So I'm not sure your body remembers, but maybe, I mean, this is for biologists or some kind of uh, other people to, to clarify if, if it is a body memory or, or, uh, or, uh, or brain memory. I don't think we can distinguish. <laughs> uh, for the, uh, yeah, for, for what is missing, I think we cannot answer if, 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 I think we don't have a clear answer what is missing because it was utopia. So what, what was utopia? Somebody would, uh, some, some, I think some artists said that the communism was one big happening. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe this happening is missing. That actually, that is missing for them, that something is happening. Maybe that's a good idea, actually, to think about it like that. Any more questions? But I, I mean, I would like to say that now these are my points, not Lucia's points, right? Yes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, it's more of a comment, I guess. Uh, you see, the problem with images is that you see one thing, and then you hear something that you do not see. Uh, I'm afraid that that was my impression, the impression that I gathered from the series. I'll, I'll try to explain why. Uh, you mentioned the fact that the, the lady, the author, uh, herself lived at that time, right? So it must be part of her experience on the one hand. But on the other, what she constructs is highly ideological because she uses a logic of oppositions, the official, the unofficial. That's already a very ideological approach to the image. Now that's one thing. The other thing that bothers me is the notion of empty forms that has been used here. Now, if you speak of empty forms as applied to ideology, I think I know what you're talking about. But how do those empty forms translate into bodily gestures? I don't, see, uh, I don't see an immediate transition. Well, if you speak of technologies, I mean, the way bodies were formed, uh, the way power would form bodies under socialism, okay, I accept. But empty forms, and then when you speak of something that is beneath those forms, are you speaking of the spirit, the life of the spirit? But how can photography show that kind of existence? That's another question. So um, that's uh, really something that bothers me because it seems to me that the generation that has come out of that period, and I myself belong to that generation, uh, really wants to avoid easy solutions in the sense of, you know, clear-cut oppositions between official and unofficial, between, uh, between what else? But I would perhaps introduce in the conclusion one uh, temporary distinction between form and the formless, because essentially life that you were alluding to, everyday life, private life, is the formless. And photography, the first gesture of photography is endowing the formless with form. Photography is form by definition. So the question is, how do you form or how do you represent the formless? And that's a big question to my mind. Uh, okay, thank you very much for the comment, uh, but I don't see why every day is formless, actually. Uh, I mean, I think the everyday has got its own form, and actually it was the form that uh, the photographer wanted to capture in different way than the, what I called after Yurchak, empty form, which was um, uh, this form... Uh, yeah, the question of beneath the form, why I used this, this was of course the metaphor. Uh, and I didn't mean the, the spirit, um, but actually uh, if, 
if I use this uh, Yurchak's idea, it's because he says that something was going under structured form that w generally was meant afterwards to be seen when the form only collapsed. So uh, it's not that this is immaterial. It's not that form is material and what is beneath is non-material. It's another form of materiality, but it's something that is uh, not st maybe strongly structured. And this is why I don't see why every day doesn't have form. To me, every day has got form. I mean, it's, uh, um, uh, it's not formless. It's got the form of uh, um, like very um, actively created and produced in every moment. And it's uh, kind of uh, always partial and situated. Uh, it's like the difference maybe between uh, metis uh, and other kinds of knowledge. I mean, it's like uh, something that is... Uh, that is really fluid and and uh, uh, embodied, uh, and the form, m yeah, uh, the form would be something that is much less structured and defined, and that is probably put on the body in terms of disciplining it and these uh, regimes of uh, um, of making people to repeat several certain gestures in order to get their body ad their bodies adjusted to certain gesture regimes. So uh, I would understand form as, as this concept, and I think this is the way more or less Jurczak understands it, but uh, uh, I might be wrong. Yeah. And maybe I will just add that I don't think we should be afraid talking about the spirit in this, in this I mean, wi within these projects. I, I'm sure that, um, I'm, I'm almost sure that if Lucia would be here, she would not be afraid to talk about the spirit or something underneath. That is maybe what is missing. Maybe. I think that form or empty form in Poland was uh, very quickly uh, replaced by mass culture and I don't see that in these photographs here and uh, when we have a fairly critical attitude to mass culture mass culture which after all uh, multiply certain patterns, uh, young people have uh, patterns or formats that they can uh, fit into, and it seems uh, to be a harmful and dangerous process. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's so easy, because uh, previously we had been forced uh, to take on a different form, but here this new reality, the reality in the photos, but I don't know to what extent it reflects the actual um, condition seems deprived or free of uh, giving in to mass culture. Maybe that's what these people are missing. Maybe if uh, they got involved, maybe if uh, they uh, started barbecuing, uh, going to parties and so on. I mean, older people also do that. They uh, barbecue, they attend uh, dances and so on. Maybe they'd be uh, happier. And I don't know, I can't say. And what also seems fairly explicit here and fairly evident, and in the entire transition, well, we lived under a given a system that uh, stripped us of freedom, but now we do have freedom, but freedom is uh, difficult, and we have to make our own choices. We need to find our own form if uh, we don't want to. Uh, adopt mass culture, uh, if we, so we, it requires an effort, and that's very difficult. The older generation, and not only, uh, doesn't cope uh, very well. Freedom is very difficult, and I think that's the main problem that we're dealing with here in our part of the world, where this uh, uh, violent, actually, transition, where this rapid, sudden transition occurred in capitalism, no matter whether we identify it with democracy or not, also, uh, we need to uh, learn more. I mean, democracy is also difficult. It requires an effort. You need to. Civil society is difficult. And uh, that's what we're suffering from at the moment. And would you like to answer something? 
think I will just read a, one, one statement here that imagine you have been living in a space, both physical, uh, uh, physical and mental, which was delineated for you by some committee. And all of a sudden, you discover that this space, both physical and mental, has turned out to be substantially larger. And that reflects maybe to your notion of responsibility and, and the freedom. And yeah, which comes with with, with those questions. Okay, thank you very much. We have to finish this uh, panel. And może pani coś powiedzieć później? Thank you so much for your uh, for your discussion. Very inspiring. And uh,